Well, did you ever play one of those um, little games when you were a child? Uh, step on a crack, break the devil's back. Step on a crack, break the devil's back. I think it's a form of prayer. It's like a little child saying, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. That's like prayer as well, isn't it? Um, so, my intention today is to talk about the Jesus prayers. Now, I'm a very important legend in my own mind, so I actually have a business card <laughs> and uh, with my name and address on it. And the other side of it are the six Jesus prayers. Actually, why I use it mostly is um, when I go to uh, the hospital and the person is uh, almost comatose, uh, they're not responding, I anoint them. When one of you is sick, call in the elders of the church. And I just generally leave my card by the bedside. That kind of thing, you know. Anyway, I have um, six Jesus prayers on it. And let me read them to you. Uh, the first one is, Jesus, I love you, possess me. Now, this, this prayer was revealed to me personally. Okay, Jesus, I love you, possess me, about 35 years ago. The next one here is, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy in me, a sinner. Uh, this one basically comes out of the Holy Bible. If you remember, two men went up to the temple to pray. Um, one of them was a Pharisee and the other a publican, a kind of a, an outcast in some way. And the Pharisee prayed with head unbowed. He said, um, he says, uh, I thank you, God, I'm not like the rest of men, crooked, grasping, adulterous. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess to the poor. And uh, I thank you, God, I'm not like this fella at the back of the temple. And the man at the back of the temple didn't even raise his eyes to heaven. And he simply said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus, who was telling the story, um, said that this man, the one who said, Lord, Jesus, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, went down to his house justified while the other did not. And so the Jesus prayer, this one comes from that parable. Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy in me, a sinner. And it was said and preached all over the Christian world at the time that Christianity was founded. The next one, don't know much about the details here. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee. Um, you'll see it's typical of, of the Catholic homes, especially in the, in the 50s and 60s and 40s in different countries, an image of the Sacred Heart, his heart on fire with love for us. And this one, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee. Um, we had one of these in, in the home where I grew up in Two Castle Street Care. And my, occasionally, uh, my mother would stand in front of the uh, picture of the Sacred Heart and she'd say, Sacred Heart of Jesus, deliver me from these children. Uh, I know what she meant and um, not to worry. Um, the next one is also a kind of a heart prayer as well. Uh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. And you're asking Jesus to fashion your heart, to mold it uh, into a heart like his. And this one is so we can evangelize. Uh, the next one, Jesus, Mary, I love you, save souls. Jesus, Mary, I love you, save souls. There's nothing more important than the salvation of souls. And I mean, salvation of everybody in the face of the planet. <clears throat> People who don't know Jesus even. God wants them saved. So this way you can pray, Jesus, Mary, I love you, save souls. And then the last one is fiery again. It's heart of Jesus burning with love for me. 
uh, the, the fire of God's love. Um, don't know what I'm talking about, but I do know that the heart of God is on fire uh, with love for mankind. Heart of Jesus burning with love for me, inflame my heart uh, with love for thee. You'll probably remember that when uh, God manifested himself to Moses, it was from the flame of the burning bush. Um, the heart of God on fire. So those are the Jesus prayers. Um, and you can say them any place. You can be driving your car. Maybe it's a good time to pray, actually. Um, you can pray them on your fingers. You've got ten of them. You know. Now, the first one, back to the first one, that was from the first century of, of the faith. Um, here's the best of my understanding of how it came about. Um, the early, the early Christian church, when they came together, the first church, the Catholic church founded by Jesus, when, when they came together, they did two essential things. One was they, they broke open the word, the scripture, the Bible, if you want to call it that, the gospels, and then they broke the bread. That's what they did. Um, and of course, when, when you listen to the word of God, um, that's a form of communion as well, Christ coming to in the word, and then, of course, the breaking of the bread. You'll see this um, form of the Mass in, in the Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, um, when the two disciples were on the road to Emmaus. As far as they were concerned, Jesus was dead. He was dead and buried. It was over with. And Jesus walked along with them, and they didn't recognize that, they were, that he was Jesus, risen from the dead. And he said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along and are so sad? And they said to one another, for God's sake, man, I don't think they said that, but you know what I mean, for God's sake, man, are you the only person living in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened there these past few days? And... Uh, and Jesus said, what things? Now, he's the only one who did know what was happened there. But what happened? They're all about Jesus. All about Jesus. They were evangelizing by telling the story. And Jesus said to them, yeah, they had said to Jesus, we had hoped that, that uh, he was the one to set Israel free, uh, but how he was handed over to the chief priests who put him to death. And that's not all. Some women of our company were at the tomb in the early morning, and him they did not see. And then Jesus said to them, Oh, you foolish men, so slow to believe the whole message of the prophets. And then beginning with Moses, he went through the Torah, the books of kings, the prophets, the Psalms, and explained to them the passages of the scripture that referred to himself. So that's what we do at Catholic Mass. We open the scripture. And then when the three of them reached the destination, Jesus made as if to go on. And they said, no, stay with us, stay with us, still not recognizing it was Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? And he went in with them. And when he sat at table with them, he, he took some bread. He broke it in front of them, gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. Now, all over the Catholic world, that's what we do every Sunday and every day. We break open the scripture, we break the bread, the bread which is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. So I digressed um, the Jesus prayers. Um, <clears throat> this young man w was, on a Sunday, uh, approached the church, the assembly of God, which is what the word church means, and as he walked in, he heard um, words from the scripture that said, pray unceasingly. And that's all he heard, pray unceasingly. And it stuck in his mind and wouldn't go away. Pray unceasingly, pray unceasingly, pray unceasingly. And, and, and you know, imagine him saying, how in the name of God can somebody pray unceasingly? But anyway, that's, that's what, what he heard. 
and it was driving him crazy. He wanted to pray unceasingly. So the story goes about him that um, shortly after all this happened to him, this pray unceasingly, he, he, um, he sold the farm that he had. Uh, he, he got his sister to go into a convent where the nuns looked after her. And he went up into the mountains, I believe at the time, the Russian mountains. And on the first day on the mountain, his heart was overflowing with joy because all day long he was able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven all day long. He was finally doing what the scripture said, pray unceasingly. But that night, when darkness settled on the mountain and the wolves began to howl and they were scavenging for their food, uh, he became terribly frightened. And so all night long, he cried out this prayer, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Just like a child, you know, mommy, 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 daddy, in, in fear. And all night long, he was exhausted. The wolves were howling in the background. The dark was intense. The cold was intense. The loneliness was intense and all night long he was Lord Jesus Christ son of the living God have mercy on me a sinner and then when the morning came ah hope you can see again uh, he said to he said in his foolishness he said no now I can go back to praying again and so he started off uh, our father give us this day our daily bread thy kingdom come and then it dawned on him that the animals he was afraid of during the night were hidden in the bushes all around him so all day long he went lord jesus christ son of the living god have mercy in me a sinner lord jesus christ son of the living god have mercy in me a sinner then then finally uh, he said something very strange, but this has happened to me, so I understand it. Uh, he said, I got used to the mountains. I got used to the loneliness. Uh, I got used to the terrible dark. And then he said, the devil made me pray. So, um, the Jesus prayers. I recommend them to you. Uh, pray throughout the day. And what's so powerful about the Jesus prayers is this, that every Jesus prayer, every, every time you say the name of Jesus, the devil bows his knee. Um, I finish, promise I'm finishing with this. There was a hymn that was sung in the early Christian church. You'll find it in the letter to the Philippians in the scripture, chapter 2. And Paul is writing to the Philippians. And he says to them, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. Though he, Jesus, was in the form of God, he didn't cling to his equality with God, but he emptied himself and took the form of a baby. A baby. Everybody understands a baby? And he was humbler yet. Uh, he was obedient even unto death, death upon the cross. For this reason, because of his obedience, the Father raised Jesus from the dead and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that all beings in the heavens, the angels, on the earth, ourselves, and under the earth, the devils, must, listen to it, must bow the knee at the name of Jesus and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So uh, if the armies of hell ever come after you, one little word will, will, will fell them, Jesus.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen.